Good? New year. Perfect vision, 2020. I'm ready. If you've got your Bibles, you can open with me to Isaiah chapter 54. I've taught on this before, but it's just, it's so perfect. Um, uh, it is a, it's a passage of Scripture that's dealing with, with the nation of Israel, and it's dealing with them on a couple of fronts. Uh, first of all, it's just they're in exile. They've been, they've been reprimanded. They've been punished by God. They've been, uh, they've been allowed by God to, to do their own thing, and then they find themselves away from God, and, and, uh, and Babylon has taken over, and, 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 and Isaiah is calling them back. What's really interesting about this is 700 years before Christ. 700 years before Christ, and, and this, this passage is not only talking to Israel, but if you'll, if you'll understand it as we read it, it is, it, is, it is prophesying the Messiah, and it's also prophesying the end of the world as we know it in, in this prophetic sense of, of the, the government of Jesus Christ being established forever and ever. And this, and this place of God's salvation is available now. What Isaiah was doing was pointing to the cross and saying, everything that's available on the cross, I'm offering you here today. Come back to God. Look at the cross. I've got, I've got this good news for you. It is the gospel in a beautiful way presented by Isaiah. And, and, and as I was motivated by what I was going to talk about today, there was a couple of motivations that I... That I that, uh, kind of were on my heart, pressed against me on my heart. And that was, the first one is this, when we come into a new year, last week we talked about, you know, getting your vision from God, getting a fresh vision from God. God had a plan for you. He's got this plan for you. He wants you to, he wants you to flourish. He wants to bring victory. He wants to bring you out into freedom in so many different areas. And, and we talk about this transformation process. Cheryl just mentioned it, that we're all in. This, this move toward being conformed into the image of Christ. And that that great grace, that power of God is made available to us. And Isaiah is going to talk about it here in just a minute. But oftentimes what happens, what happens is we fail. And there's usually two responses to failure. In, in the Christian life, sometimes there's three. Sometimes people really understand it, and they don't allow the enemy to get them in a place where they're not growing. But there are usually two responses that cause us or stun our growth. They're, they cause us to stumble or they stun our growth because we can't get over our bad self. The first one is this. We, 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 we think and we see ourselves and we hold this idea of perfection up in front of ourselves and then we see all the imperfections and it discourages us and we just come to the conclusion that we can't win. You know, we, we come to the place where we go, oh, it's just not worth it. I just can't seem to get it right. Anybody, anybody with me? I had a guy one time tell me, uh, he said, man, I, I'm about ready to quit going to church. And I said, what, what, you know, help me understand that. He said, well, he said, I, I went last week and they told me everything that I did wrong and I hadn't had a chance to fix that. And then I come back another week and they give me a whole set of other things that I'm doing that I'm not doing right. And, I can't, and so I never get anything fixed. And I, you know, I think that's true. I think that was an honest assessment sometimes of how we feel and some of us the second thing that happens is some of us just quit you know we quit God we quit church we quit trying you know and 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 and, and the reason we do those things is is because we've got a wrong perception of what God's actually trying to do you know God's God God wants you to be perfect and perfection is the goal but he knows that you're not and he knows that without him, you can't ever be. And he also knows that it's this pathway of progress. It's not, it's not this instantaneous perfection. And you can't expect yourself to be there. It's, it's just not. But at the same time, you can't, 
you can't give leeway for sin. It's this delicate balance that you've got to walk in where you say, hey, I'm challenged to be transformed, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of mercy and know that this is going to take some time. And so God's saying this year, he's, he's given us this idea of salvation. He's saying, hey, without my vision, you're going to have a chaotic year. Without my vision, it's going to be confusing. If you let life just dictate, it's going to be a rough year. But if you'll get my vision for your life, which is this transformation process, you'll submit to that. You'll come back to me, submit to that process. It's going to be a great life, a, a, a great year. How many of you say that uh, 2019 had some challenges? Anybody? 2019 has some challenges for us. You know, for us as a, as a family and, you know, certainly, certainly here with all the building stuff going on. I mean, it was, it was just, it was challenging, you know. Don't, don't you love the parking lot? Hey, we got somewhere to park. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> so, you know, you see this great progress, but if we, if we wanted perfection, we'd be frustrated instead of celebrating that we've, you know, we've, got, we've made progress. In, in 1, Chronicles chapter, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, it's, it's the story of Jabez. Many of you are probably familiar with the prayer of Jabez. He called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Say that with me. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. That's a great prayer to the Lord, isn't it? Why don't we hold our hands up like this? And why, why don't we say, Oh, would you bless me indeed. Let's do it again. That's good. Let's say, let's say a double portion. Oh, would you bless me indeed with a double portion. I'll take triple. Bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. This is a great prayer, isn't it? Lord, help. God, I need you to be with me. I need you to bless me. I need your presence to come and be in my life so I don't mess things up. Lord, I just don't want to mess things up this year. Am I talking to anybody but me? Lord, really, save me from myself. And it said that God granted him his request. You know, because his heart is in the right place. He understands. He has faith. He, he knows that without God, all these things are going to happen. And the same is true for you and me. But, but there's no condemnation in Christ. He wants to continue to bring victory and salvation. And we're going to see that in this prayer today and in this, in this message from Isaiah. Psalm 127, 1 and 2, this is from the New Living Translation. It says, unless the Lord builds your house this year, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects the city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. The Lord needs to be the one that's protecting. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. It is useless to do that because God is the one who gives rest to his loved ones. There's this, there's this understand that it's a, it's a time to build and, and it's a time for God to expand you. God doesn't want you to shrink back. He wants, he wants you to grow. He wants you to move. He wants to expand your territory. He wants you to, he wants you to, to, to receive everything that he has for you. And we see that in Isaiah. Isaiah 54, I'm going to actually, you know, most of the time, oftentimes people, they just grab like two scriptures, two verses, and, 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 they, and they preach on that. And, and I just didn't feel like that's what the Lord wanted me to do. I'm going to take the whole chapter, Isaiah 54, and then, and then we're going to spill over into 55 as well at the end. And we're just going to kind of break this down real quick and see what, what, Isaiah presented to the church. So the first thing that we need to see in chapters 1 and 3, there's actually two things in these first three 
uh, verses, excuse me, these first three verses in chapter 54, uh, the first one is that, that, that the way to, to enter in and the way to bring heaven down, is heaven waiting for you or, or are you waiting for heaven, um, is, is, is to break forth in singing and cry aloud. We're going we're gonna to see that here in Isaiah 54. Now, to understand this, you've got to understand that the people of God were seeing no fruit of the kingdom. Now, I know that there are areas in each one of our lives that we're not seeing fruit of the kingdom. And what Isaiah really is doing here is he's given a prescription of how to call heaven down, how to meet kingdom, how to go to kingdom. And he says this, he says this in Isaiah 54, he says, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth in singing and cry out loud. Cry aloud, you who have no, not labor with child. You who have not bore fruit, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. There's this place that God said, no matter where you are, no matter where you see fruitfulness, if that's a word, where you don't see any fruit, where you don't see kingdom coming, that place, he says, sing, cry aloud. When you're discouraged or depressed or you don't have any hope, sing, cry aloud. Sing and cry aloud because when you sing and cry aloud, that is the actual thing that is going to call down heaven. That is the thing that, that, that brings heaven to you is singing and crying aloud. Now, that means that eliminates silent prayer. I just want to throw that. It's hard to cry aloud silently. And we're laughing, and I'm, you know, I, I make fun of that, but I'm, I'm as serious as I can be. There are so many people, when it comes to communication with God, who somehow feel disqualified or insecure, which is, we talked about last week, the, the tactic of the enemy to keep you from actually doing the thing that's going to make you successful. And God says, do it out loud. He wants to hear your voice call to him. You would never not cry out if your three-year-old was about to step in front of a car crossing the street. It's the, it's the automatic thing when we want to get a result is to cry out loud. When we understand that God knows exactly where each of us are, He knows the dark places, He knows your failures, he knows the bad decisions you made. He knows the, the fruit that those bad decisions have made. And that's where you find Israel. You find Israel in a place where the fruit of their bad decisions had gotten them into a, a bind. And God is saying, I know where you are. He knows where you are. You're not hiding anything from God, Cheryl. There's no way God is, is confused about where you are or the things that you're struggling with. He already knows all those things, and he's saying to you, this is what I want you to do. I want you to prepare for fruitfulness. He says, I want you to prepare for victory. That's what stretching out the tents mean. That's what it means to put the post down. This is what I want you to do. I want you to stretch it out. I want you to get ready. I want you to move into a place of expectation with me. You come back to me and you say, Lord, I expect abundance. I'm expecting you to do incredible things. Incredible things. God knows exactly where you are. And the, and the beginning place is praise and crying out loud. That always brings kingdom. God says, if you'll cry out to me, I'll answer you. He says it. He promises it. 
Last week, we said the person that's a successful Christian is the one that believes the promises are for him. He says, you cry out loud, I'll respond. That's what Jabez did. He cried out loud, and God heard his cry, and he answered him. And so, and so he, it, it, to move into this place where we ask that, that God enlarge our territory, we expect expect God to do something, there are several things that have to happen, and that is that you have to forget your past failures. Now, when I say forget, you know, you, you may not be able to because it might be Jacob. You might have this lip, but, but when I say forget, what I really mean by that is don't identify yourself with your failures. That's what I really mean by that. I mean, you know, we all failed. I mean, I, I, I failed abundantly last year. I failed, but I, that's not who I am. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not that failure. I've got, I've got to move past those failures and say, no matter my failure, thank you, Jesus, that the truth of your word is that your mercies are new every day toward me. And that your love for me is exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think. It's for, it is wider than the east is from the west. It, it's deep, God. I thank you for that. I've got to get over my failures. And so right now, right now, let's just tell the Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm over my past. I'm over my failures. I forget what lies behind. And I press toward the high calling of God. That is in Christ Jesus. It's called. Jesus said about your failures, he don't even remember. They're done. So we need to prepare for God's blessing. That, that requires faith. That requires action. It requires faith that God's power is going to actually do something. See, God's calling these people back to a place, back to a desolate place. He says, prepare for my power. Prepare for me. You're not preparing for you. You're preparing for God. You have an expectation for God to carry out this, this big vision he's got for you. Because your vision should be something that you can't accomplish. I had somebody called me this week and said, man, I said, I made a, I might have even said this last week, I made a ridiculous commitment to the building fund that I never thought I could keep. And God gave me the money. And I, and I get to do it. You know, all God's vision for you should be unattainable in your own strength. You shouldn't have vision for yourself that you can do on your own. It needs to be a God-sized task. It needs to be something that he moves in. And so he's saying, stretch out your tent that's bigger than what you can accomplish on your own, based on the vision that I'm giving you, based on what your expectations are for me. And so we see that. We see break forth into singing and crying aloud, begin to sing to God and cry aloud to him your requests, your, your, your heartaches, your failures, and, and allow him to bring healing and salvation to those things. And once we've done that, once we've gotten over our past failures, once we understand that God has forgiven us and he wants to bring healing and victory in those areas, then we have to be able to start fresh with a clean slate. That's what I love about new seasons. You seasons give me the ability to just go. Whoosh. Whew. Anybody feel like that this year? I had a chance to, to take a week off uh, this last week. And I feel like. Whoosh. You know, I didn't think about anything other than family for like five days. I didn't know what to do with myself. But I'm rested and I, I feel like God's like. And, and when I think, what are you going to do this year, Lord? And I've got, I've got incredible thoughts of the possibilities of God. Imagine the possibilities if you allow God. Not your possibilities. God's possibilities. What are they? What do they look like for you? 
got to start fresh. Verse 4 says, do not fear. Say that with me. For you will not be ashamed. Oh, come on. Y'all need to read that better than that. Here we go. Do not fear. For you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced. For you will not be put to, to shame. Isn't that good? There's nothing you could have done last year that, that God's saying, you need to carry shame. Matter of fact, he's saying, I'm going to fight that you don't have shame. That's what he's about to do. You're going to see that here in just a minute. Let me read this. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore, which means this barren place, this place that felt like they were separated from God. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your Redeemer, capital R, is the Holy One of Israel. You see, Jesus, he is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife who was refused, says your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you. Let me just, I'm going I'm to get back to that, but I just want to tell you what that means and, and put it in practical sense so that you can understand where you might be. It's important that we understand this concept, and that is this. Every now and again, when you start doing things your own way without God, he'll take his hand off of you and say, okay, you go do that. You go do that. And, uh, and when you get done, I'll be here. Anybody experience that? When you, when you get done, I'll be right here. And you get out there and never, never land. And you say, how did I get here? And, and then you look back and you say, well, I made that decision, that decision, that decision. And that's how I got here. And I forsook the kingdom of God. That's where Israel is. Israel's in a place where they're way out from God because they've left him behind. And he says, I let you, I let you bear the fruit of your own decisions for a while. For a while. And, I, and I, because I was irritated at you, I let you just go do your own thing. But I'm done with that. Come back. My mercy is greater than my frustration with you. That's what he says. My mercy is greater. It's going to be poured out on you. You know, the, the weird thing about the history of Israel is that we know that everybody didn't take God up on this, on this proposition. You still have a choice of whether you're going you're gonna to allow God into every arena of your life this year, whether he's really going to be your vision whether he is really going to be the one who's Lord of all. And so we see, that we see him saying, he says, with a little wrath I hid my face for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. He is the one who redeems. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. Isn't that a great picture of the gospel? And so when as I read this, you know what I get out of this, man? They're, they, you know, the only reason there could have been shame, the only reason there could be disgrace, the only reason that all that stuff could have happened, there had been a reproach or whatever it might be, is because we were concerned about what people would think. And in 2020, we need to make a covenant with each other that we're not going to care what people say about us. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We, we, don't care, we don't care what people say. We don't care what, what they're saying about us. We're going we're gonna to do what God says. We're not going to fear people. And w therefore, we don't have to be ashamed. We also need to understand that as we follow God, uh, things change. God, God does redeem. 
And so, so what we've got to do is we've got to get past the place where we have, we have shame about our sin, and that becomes a testimony we begin to build on. It becomes a place where we say, you know, I got out on my own, and I got away from God, but it's not a place of shame. It's a place that I can begin to say, here is my great God's grace on my life. There's a testimony that's being built from that place that the, the devil would use for shame. Things change. God redeems. And so we need to be at peace with God. He says he will he will never remove his covenant of peace for those that he loves. And so we need to be at peace with God. You don't need to be at peace with your sin. You need to be at peace with righteousness. There's a major difference. He says, come back to me. You come back to me. You come back to righteousness. I don't want you to have peace in your, in your uh, separation. I want you to have peace in your redemption. And so we can be at peace with God. If we look at verses 11 through 17, it, it shows us that, that not only do we not need to fear people nor be ashamed, that God is our Redeemer. He's going he's gonna to allow peace to flow in our lives. He wants us to lay a rich foundation. And he's going to help us build it. I love what he says. he says. He says to you and me, just like he always does, he says, if you'll do this, I'll do this. He, he always does it. It's this act of faith that we have to begin to move into so that he can, he can do the thing that he's promised in your life. How many would like to be at a place financially this coming year that you've never been in before? How many would? How many want freedom financially? Would you just raise your hand with me? Would you like to have freedom? For, do you know that God's got a freedom plan for finances? And 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 your freedom plan and my freedom plan don't look the same. They're they're not the same. But He's got a freedom plan for you. How many want the most incredible marriage year that you've ever had? Would you that are married? Most incredible marriage year that I've ever had. Yeah. That's what I want. How many will say, I want, a, I want a marriage this year? Would you raise your hand? On, uh, say, ah, I got you, brother. <laughs> How many would say, I just want my children to live in peace? I just want them to prosper and have victory in every arena. How many would say, I just want my kids to love God? I just want my kids to love. There's, there's so many things that, that God wants to do. There's, there's these things that, that he says. So he says, well, if you want those things, you do this, and then I'll bring those things about. And the thing that he asks us to do is stretch out your tent. And I, I get this picture. I don't know why it is, but I get this picture of, um, I, I went camping one time, and uh, and, and it was going to rain. Then I had this tarp that was about 30 feet long and 20 feet wide. It might have been longer than that. It was humongous. And I, put, I spread that tarp out over my tent area, and I looked like a homeless person is what I really looked like. That had a pretty, <laughs> a pretty good digs going on there, you know. But when I, when I think about stretch out my tents, that, that's kind of what I, what I think of is this, is this tarp thing, you know, that, that can hold more than I can hold. You know, if, if I were to have, if I were to have, if I can get some help, I'm looking for somebody that's not taking notes, Chris. If I can have, <laughs> come here. If, <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> so if I, if I, you know, Lord, g g give me, give me, give me everything you can give me. He says, that's where we stand. Give me everything. Now, would you rather have that or a 30 by 60 tarp and say, Lord, give me everything you can give me? You see what I'm saying? That's what the Lord is saying to you and me. Stretch it out. Thank you, man. <laughs> Stretch it out. Don't limit me to this. I want to give you this. 
I want to give you abundance. Stretch out your tents. I want to build something in your family. I want to build something in your sphere of influence. Wherever you are, I want you to do more than you've ever thought you could do. God is saying that. Listen, that's just not empty words. That is the vision and nature of God for you. To do exceedingly abundantly above anything you could imagine or think. He wants you to stretch out and say, I, I, I'm not limited to what I think about myself. You see me bigger than that. And when I align myself with the creator of it all, I can't hardly imagine the possibility. What could God do if you l released him? And so what he says, he says, return to me. Align with me. Obey me. Oh, you afflicted one, verse 11, tossed with the tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems <laughs> and lay your foundation with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all your walls of precious stones. He's talking about you and me. He says, I want to take your broken down, crumbled mistakes. And I want you to come back to me. And when you do, I'm going to take these jewels of mine and I'm going to allow you to build on those. Stretch out your tents. Have expectation. Have faith. All your children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression. For you shall not fear. And from terror, for you shall not come, it shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who's, who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because God has formed those who are going to protect you. He's saying that about you and me. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. It's a beautiful picture of Jesus and the gospel and everything that it brings. Return to God. Align with him. Obey him. God will restore. God will rebuild. God will provide the resources, and God will bring the victory. That's his promise for 2020. What does he ask you to do? Stretch out your tents. Come back to him. What else does he ask you to do? <laughs> Nothing. Align. Come back to me. Stretch out your tents. Come back to me. Stretch out your tents. Say it with me. Come back to me. Stretch out your tents. Golly.
This is not planned. Just so you know. I love the uncomfort of no talking. As God deals with us. Let me say it one more time. Come back to me. Return to me. Stretch out your tent. Take off the limitations. Have incredible expectations. It's as sure as the breath inside my lungs. Your constant grace. Oh, it knows no borders or space. Your mercy, God. It's as vast as the east is from the west. Your kindness, Lord, shines like a light in the night, calling the prodigals home. And now I'm coming home. I've been away for such a long time. Love I've never known. When I heard your voice, you call me your own and you say it doesn't matter where you go this will always be your home
say, I need to come home. Anybody here says, I need to come home. Yeah, we got it right there. I need to come home. Been away too long. How many find yourself compartmentalizing and just giving portions of yourself to God? And you need to say, I need to come home. I need to come home. Would you just raise your hand if that's you? I need to get it all there. I'm getting it all there this year, God. Why don't we stand together? You know, I'm, I think I would be, I don't think I'd be giving you the tools necessary that you needed to have, because everybody's different and everybody's in a different place. And I don't want to intimidate you, and I don't, and I'm not, and this is not braggadocious. I, I, feel, I feel like the Lord is trying to just, I've just got to tell you what, what, what I'm doing real quick, and, and and then, and then you can you can move forward on your own pace or whatever you want to do, and I'll help you with that in just a minute. But Brock challenged me the other day to read the Bible in 40 days, and I thought, oh my goodness, that's that's getting with it. You remember I talked last week about you know unsuccessful people don't do the things, the hard things that that successful people are willing to do. I could immediately said, well, that's way too hard. Well, I'm, I'm really intimidated by that. I don't know if I could do it, but that's not in my nature. <laughs> I thought to myself, if Brock can do it, daggummit, I can do it too. That's, that's the way I thought. So I went and found me a New King James Bible and put it in my iBooks. And downloaded it. And I, I, f I found out you could actually do this on uh, uh, UVerse as well, or whatever that thing's called. Uh, but I, I don't have the New King James, and that's what my Bible is, and I want to read it personally. And so I downloaded that, and I, and I can bump up the speed of the person reading it to one and a half times. And I read five chapters of Genesis in like, Six minutes. I was like, oh, yeah, I got him. I got him. I done figured out a way. You can figure out a way. You know, you've got you've got not to do that. I'm not challenging you to do that. I'm challenging you to be in the Word of God every day. I'm challenging you to eat the bread of life. I'm challenging you to resubmit your soul to the Lord and let him heal every aspect of who you are. I'm challenging you to do that. How can you do that? Get, get your Bible. Get your Bible out. If you don't have a, a current one, see me. I'll get you one. But start in the book of John. Just read John. Read it every day. And go forward. You know, don't... Don't try to conquer the hard books. Everybody starts with the, you know, starts at the beginning. They read Genesis, Exodus, really cool. Then they go to Leviticus. They, they, they never go any further than Exodus. <laughs> and then it's Numbers. You got to be kidding me. You know, there's great stuff in there, but, but that's not the place to start. You know what I mean? Especially if you want success. So listen. I want to encourage you, start in John and don't have what you think you can do. I mean, come on. You know, 
Depend on God. Learn to depend on God. Make him valuable to yourself. Do something you need. Go after God like you never have before this year. Let your life be changed. Let who you are be changed by the grace of God. Why don't you lay hands on somebody in front of you and we're going to dismiss. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for each person in the room. Say this with me. We, we're going to declare a couple of things. If y'all don't mind doing it with me, I just think the Lord wants us to. So I declare right now in Jesus' name, say it with me. I declare right now in Jesus' name, no more hiding. more condemnation no shame no guilt <laughs> perfect peace may righteousness prevail because you already did it it's finished it's done Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. It's new today. It'll be new, full, tomorrow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. If you want prayer, extra prayer, our prayer team will be down front. God bless you. Have an incredible year.